Hello, oracles. Well, Tesla pulled back a little bit today, just over 2%. Not a huge deal. Tomorrow, when I was thinking about this, TSLY has its T plus two X date tomorrow. So anybody who is interested in purchasing TSLY, tomorrow will be the last day to buy it before the X date. And sometimes we see a bit of buying coming in on that day. So we might see a little push up tomorrow. And it does trend a little bit with TSLA itself. So we'll get into how that might be trading tomorrow, what I did with my moves today and what I purchased today in just a minute. All right, so looking at the charts here, again, we were down 2.38%. If you pay attention here, we are consolidating nicely. So right now we're at a point where we might be breaking out or breaking down. We're making higher lows and lower highs. This turning into a wedge here is leading us to that point where maybe we break out or break down. Now, again, tomorrow being the last day to purchase TSLY right here, again, this is also doing the same thing higher lows, lower highs. So it looks like we are potentially getting to this point. Now, when you're looking at gaps, asking yourself, which way are we going to go? We do have a pretty significant gap above TSLY here up to 1801, and we do have a small gap down here to 1602. And looking at TSLA, of course, we have this large gap above us to go to 289.52, and then the gap below us goes down to 235. So for both, we have gaps in both direction, so at this point, not sure which way we're going to move. And now, as I have mentioned before, when you're looking at August, August is typically a lower volume month. So if you do get a run up of some sort, you tend to pull back relatively quickly. So maybe we do get a breakout. We head up to that 290 level for some reason, whatever it is, and then we sell off quickly. Now we did get some news coming out today on the positive side and also got some news on the negative side when it comes to Tesla. So it's not like going by the news, we can really determine which way we are going to go one way or the other. We'll get into that news in a minute. And so today I did add more to my TSLY. I also added to NVDY. Gort and I have been talking and discussing how, you know, we could potentially see a dollar dividend return on both of these. So again, we don't know for sure. We will, we will be finding out on the third what they're going to be paying out for dividends. So now my question is, I've seen T plus two numbers, but I've also seen T plus one. So what I'm going to be trying is the T plus one. I'm going to be adding 10 shares of TSLY on Thursday just to see if I'm actually going to get paid out on those dividends. If that is the case, I will monitor that going into next month. Because if we're going to find out what the dividend is on the third and I can still buy on the third, that's a pretty significant thing. And if I can see, yeah, it's going to pay out a dollar per share on the dividends, on the day I can still buy more, I'm gonna load the boat because that's just telling me that I'm gonna get literally a dollar per share. However, the other thing I have to pay attention to is what is the value of this ETF going to be in the next month? Because getting a dollar per share is awesome, but if the ETF price is gonna pull down $2 per share, I really didn't make anything. So still have to play with that. And I'm still dollar cost averaging into it because I truly don't know. This is new to a lot of people. I don't know how it's gonna play out. So. I'm paying attention to this. But again, the sideways trading that we have been seeing is ideal for these types of ETFs. NVDY and TSLY have both been trading sideways nicely to be able to maximize the returns you can get on these dividends. And so looking here at NVDY, again, this is very sideways, a lot more sideways than TSLY has been trading. But like these ups and downs are just absolutely perfect to be able to get the maximum from your dividends. So again, this paid out almost a dollar last month, could be paying out a dollar this month. So Thursday, we find out the numbers and I will definitely let you guys know on Thursday what we came up with. And I will share all of that information in that video that day. All right, so looking over on X, we've got Alexandra, Tesla boomer mama, saying that she's going to be publishing her 10 year numbers for Tesla stock tomorrow. Very excited to see these numbers. She is great with numbers. She is extremely bullish on the stock. And I did get a question today on this tweet asking, what's the significance of 10-year numbers? What do we do with them? And quite honestly, anybody who comes up with these 10-year numbers is going to tell you it really is a shot in the dark. There's nothing specific behind it. We all run our valuation models. You just kind of map out what we know right now, how we think Tesla is going to play out over the next 10 years, what we see for growth when it comes to EVs, energy, FSD, 
Optimus, everything that is coming into this. And everybody has a different take on it. And 10-year numbers can vary widely, significantly. So the only real answer I can give is just take a look at everyone's numbers, both bulls and bears, and look at the trends. That's truly what it comes down to is you look at both sides of the coin and you decide what your own numbers are going to be. What is the trend going to be over that time? If the trend is going up, even from the bearish side of things, let's say on the bearish side, you know, it's going to maybe 2x in 10 years. Sure. I think it's going to do significantly more than that, but let's say it only does a 2x in 10 years. That's still a growth of 2x. You balance that with everybody else's numbers, with your own numbers, and you kind of come up with what you think it's going to be doing in the next 10 years. Then you obviously just track it over time. But when you look back 10 years, as Peggy put here, looking at the stock price. Now, all of these are split adjusted, but when you look back at the stock price over the last 10 years, go back 10 years and the price was $10. That's a 26X to where we are today. So when you're looking at these numbers here, yeah, I don't know if we're going to 26X in the next 10 years. Alexandra seems to think that we're going to 40X in the next 10 years. So even so, Tesla has proven that if you bought this 10 years ago, you'd be doing pretty good right now. So then you ask yourself, do you think Tesla can do this again over the next 10 years? Now, of course, most bulls do think Tesla is going to do this. You look back at Apple, same thing. You know, you have these long-term investments. That's where people make a lot of money and they grow their wealth significantly. You go out 10 years, that is generational wealth when it comes to Tesla stock. You go back to Apple back in 2007. If you held that till now, about 15 years, that's generational wealth if you just DCA'd in over that time. Now, of course, it had its ups and downs over that time, you know, but if you weren't paying attention to it and just blindly DCA'd into Apple, you'd be doing very well right now. Same thing with Tesla. If you go back 10 years and you were investing in Tesla with just a blind DCA and not letting emotions cause you to sell the stock at all, you'd be doing extremely well right now. So then you ask yourself, is Tesla going to do this again in the next 10 years? I do think they are. This is why I dollar cost average into Tesla every day. And then, of course, the things that you pay attention to over those 10 years are going to be the fundamentals. And here is Sawyer Merritt tweeting out, News, India proposes Tesla to follow Apple's model, pair Chinese and Indian suppliers. So when you're looking at India, obviously, India has been huge coming into the news for Tesla significantly with Elon coming out saying, yeah, we're putting up a factory there. It's going to be next year. We're hearing about them expediting this project as well. India is obviously on board and says, hey, you know, we're not a huge fan of China, but we're all on board with you pairing up with their suppliers to make sure that you can get everything you need to build your cars here in India. This project is moving along quickly. I don't know if we're going to end up seeing India up and running before Mexico, but gosh, they are moving pretty quickly over there in India. And with India coming on and saying, hey, do this because we think that Apple did very well with it. You guys should do the same. These are the fundamental pieces you look at when you're saying, hey, do I think Tesla is actually going to be able to pull off significant growth in the next 10 years? And then other news that Sawyer Merritt tweets out. News, Tesla is seeking approximately $100 million from the U.S. to build nine semi-truck charging stations along a route from the southern border of Texas to northern California. Bloomberg reports. Tesla proposed each be equipped with eight 700 kilowatt chargers for Tesla semis and four chargers for competitor trucks. So now, of course, this is huge. And this now is just the start of the infrastructure that is coming for Tesla. And obviously going from Texas to Northern California is really just connecting their own factories together. This way they have their own run of chargers that they would need to be able to run their own supplies. They vertically integrate everything else. Obviously, they're going to be utilizing their own semi truck to be able to move their supplies back and forth between these factories. So you got batteries going back and forth. You got vehicles going back and forth. The Tesla Semi can do that. And now they'll have chargers set up along the way. Tesla is going to go out and this is what they have been doing all along. They go out and they do it themselves. Others see that Tesla is doing it. Others see that Tesla is very successful doing it. Others want to follow suit. So if Tesla is going to end up having this whole truck route going from Texas to California, Others will come on board and say, hey, you know what? We can do that too. Look at how successful Tesla is. Tesla's saving a lot of money in shipping costs because they're doing their own shipping. Tesla's saving a lot of money because they're using EVs. Oh, hey, 
Pepsi is actually doing this as well. They're saving a lot of money. Look at their P&L. Their transportation costs are down significantly. We'd love to cut costs. We should do the same. Then all of a sudden more people are doing it. Then we're gonna start hearing demand for these supercharger stations to be coming up all over the place in different routes. And you're gonna see whatever the most popular routes are. They're gonna want more of these to come up for truckers. This is just the start of that spiral building. And again, Tesla does it for themselves first to lead by example. Then they go out there and others see what Tesla is doing and they wanna follow suit. And speaking of leading by example, Jim Farley here tweeting out for Ford, check out what the team is doing at REVC, increasing F-150 Lightning production thanks to retooling and expansion. We'll be building more trucks for customers faster than ever. On track for production capacity run rate of 150,000 vehicles. So proud of this team. They keep raising the bar. Thank you. Now, kudos to Ford. I mean, that's awesome that they are doing this. But when you look at this picture, the first thing you think of, wow, that looks like a Tesla type picture. That looks like maybe the Cybertruck. This is what Tesla does. They go out, they lead by example, others follow in their footsteps. And kudos to Ford for going out there and doing this and saying, hey, you know what? Tesla is succeeding in this way. We are going to do the same. You know, this is one of the things I do like about Jim Farley is the fact that he's not afraid of doing that. They're going to do it in their own Ford way, but they see, hey, Tesla's successful doing these things. We're going to do the same. And even if it is just a picture to congratulate the team, that's awesome to see. Love to see that going on. So again, congratulations to Ford. Let's see what their next earnings are going to be looking like. We know that it's still going to be a struggle for them when it comes to being profitable on their EVs. But hey, Tesla was in the beginning too. Let's see how the time plays out. The big difference, obviously, between Ford and Tesla is the fact that Ford has the ICE vehicles that they need to cannibalize in order to get EVs off the ground. Tesla did not have to do that. But either way, I'm a fan of all of these things changing over to EVs. We'll see how Ford does later down the road. But we can see that Tesla leads by example and others follow in their footsteps. That's all I've got for you guys today. Again, a little pullback today, not a huge deal. I added a little bit more, added significantly to my TSLY. Very happy about that. We will see in a couple of days what dividends pay out. Let me know in the comments below if you guys added any more to your TSLY also, or maybe you just started adding to a position today as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Have a great one.